All right, so today I want to talk about the event loop and specifically in the event loop, how things are decided in terms of the sequence that code is run. So talking about tasks, micro tasks, uh, the main stack and UI renders and things that happen in the UI rendering portion of the event loop, uh, specifically request animation frame, that function, when does that get called? When do tasks created by that get called? So we have here these four different parts. There's the main stack, which is as you write code. If I look in my web page here, so very simple web page, I've got this tiny little bit of HTML. Here's my script tag at the bottom console.log. That is on the main execution context. It's in the main stack. So this is being called. The browser sees that, says, okay, I need to run that right away. Uh, the event loop decides, yep, this is something I can run right away. And I need to continue running this right away. So if I had a whole bunch of these, the browser wants to do all those things before it does anything else. Okay. So that is just the main stack. It's whatever code you put here. If I created a function, I called that function. The calling of that function is happening on the main stack. So that has to execute right away. So that's our main stack. Micro tasks is another thing that we have, which comes immediately after all the code on the main stack. So when the main stack is cleared out, then the next thing that runs is any available micro task. Now, a micro task is promises, anything that you've done with the mutation observer. So if there's callbacks for the mutation observer, that's the thing that can monitor. There's a video that I've made on that. You'll see the uh, card up there for that. Or Q micro task is a method that was specifically added so that you could create one of these without creating a promise. Just here's a function. I want you to run this thing. Here's a bit of code I want you to run as a micro task. So when the main stack is empty, do this. Then we've got two other parts. I'll start with this last one here, the task queue. So anytime you use set timeout or set interval, if you've ever created a timer and you're trying to get something to run a little bit faster, you're saying, okay, I've got all this stuff and I want to run this after a delay of zero milliseconds. So you're thinking, okay, this thing's gonna run right away because I said, wait, zero milliseconds. But what happens with the set timeout is the function that you put inside there, the function you pass to set timeout gets put into the task queue and it waits until it's time to run the next task. So the browser does everything on the main stack. It does all the micro tasks and then it gets to the task queue and says, okay, give me the next task. Your function from the task queue that was put there by the set timeout call, that is going to be run next. And then the browser goes back to the event loop. It checks to see, is there anything else on the main stack now? No. Okay. I will go back and look and see if there is another micro task. And then I'll look to see if there's another task. So a second timer that was also set to zero milliseconds. So you can see there's this more, bigger and bigger delay that's happening. The zero milliseconds is sort of the minimum amount of time you, you're willing to wait before this happens, but it's not really a great way to make code run in the order that you want it to run. Understanding this and when these things are happening, that's how we do it. So timers, set interval, set timeout, those are tasks. The functions that you use, that you uh, create or wrap, add to the task queue with set timeout and set interval. Event listeners, click listeners, onload listeners, all those things, those are all tasks. The functions that are the event listeners, those are tasks. So those go on the task queue. And then our last one here, the UI render updates. So we have one method that we can call the request animation frame. We're saying, I want to run this function. When we're doing that part of it, when the browser is looking at the CSS, doing any style calculations, rebuilding the layout, figuring out, okay, do I have to change the render tree? And then do I need to actually paint any pixels on the screen? Request animation frame is part of that process. It's actually the first step 
in, in those things. So when we're doing UI render updates, that's when request animation frame runs. And it's the browser that decides based on what's going on and how busy things are, when to do this. It will always come after the micro task queue, but it could come before or after the task queue. So it may opt to say, you know what? It's been 16 milliseconds. I better do a UI update. So it'll go over to that section and do that before it does the next task. All right, so let's let's test this. Let's look at the code and actually see what's going on here. So I'm going to write a series of things, and I'm going to use the letters A through M with all of these different tasks that I'm going to create here. So I'm going to call Q microtask, and inside there, my function that I'm going to run is just going to be console.log B. So I've, oops, I've got one console log and then I've got a micro task. So this will appear AB in that order. No surprises there. If I add a request animation frame after that, so we pass it a function to call. We'll do the same thing. We'll say console log C. And we'll go on, we'll do another console.log D. All right, so A, B, C, D. That is the order that I've written these things in my code, but A and D are the only things that are actually on the main stack. Then we've got something that's a micro task and something that's in the UI render phase. So A, D, that was the two console.logs. And then B was the micro task and C was the request animation frame. So that's the order that these things are running in. All right, so I'm just going to quickly paste in the rest of these and then we'll look at the order that they're all running in. All right, so there we are. We've got some micro tasks, couple, uh, promise with a couple of thens chained on to the end of it. We had a set timeout with zero, request animation frame, another set timeout, and we'll set that one to zero as well. So we have all these different types of things. Now, the order that I've written them in, A, B, C, D, and set timeout, we've said, hey, don't wait anything. Promise we're telling resolve right away. So it looks like at first glance, request animation frame, hey, as soon as you're ready to do an update on the screen, please do this. You know, so it looks like we're not asking for any delays. We want to run these things in alphabetical order. But when we look at the page, so A, D, F, J, M, so you can see that this is not in alphabetical order. This is jumping all over the place. So I'm going to add in here just a, a, another word beside each one to say what they are. So console.log, that's running on the main stack. Q microtask, well, that's a microtask. Then we've got request animation frame, so just say RAF and console log. This is on the stack and we've got a set timeout, which is a task. Console log this is on the main stack. And this is a micro task. Promises are micro tasks. Now it's important to note here, promise.resolve, that will resolve immediately. So that will say, okay, I've got a resolved promise and it passes it to the then immediately. What happens though, is the function inside of here, this is a micro task that is added to the micro task queue. And the same as this one, then this one gets added to the micro task queue. And we'll come back and we'll talk about the micro task queue in a minute, because there's some interesting stuff happening there. So we've got request animation frame, part of the UI render, and we've got another main stack one. And then this is a task. And my Q micro task is a micro task. And then stack at the bottom. All right, so we save that. Now we've got labels beside each of the letters so we can see what order they're happening. And sure enough, everything on the stack happened first, then all the micro tasks, then the UI render, and then the task. If I refresh this, this time, all the request animation stuff happened at the end, after the tasks. So as I was saying earlier, 
these two can change the order because it's the browser that decides how busy have I been lately? Do I need to do a UI render right now? So these may happen before the tasks, or there could be one task and then these and then another task. With the micro tasks, coming back to that thing with the promise dot then dot then, this is not alphabetical order here. B and then G and then L and then H. The H we coded to happen right after G. So what's happening here? Here's the G, here's the H. Why didn't these two run in that order? Why did the one down here, L, why did that one run before the H? And that's the way that microtasks are added to their own queue. It is possible for one microtask to trigger another microtask being added to the queue, to the microtask queue. And so this got down to here and said, okay, please put this on the microtask queue. That was done as the main stack was being read. So this is on the main, on the microtask queue. We were then jumping down to here. We're adding this to the UI render section, this to the stack, this to the task, and then L, the function inside of here. This got added after this one. So later on, after the main stack is done and the micro tasks begin to run, we're going to start looking at our micro task queue. First micro task, B. So that was up here. This one, that was the first one added to the microtask queue, so that runs first. And then our promise dot then, this is the first one, that got added to the microtask queue, at which point this is done, it's resolved, so it immediately calls the next then method. And then this gets added to the microtask queue. But there's already L on the microtask queue. So this is the next one that gets run and micro tasks are allowed to add more things to the micro task queue. And we don't have to wait for the event loop to come around again. It will just say, okay, G is done. L is done. Oh, there's something else that's been added. Okay. I'll go and do that one as well. When it comes to tasks, we actually have to wait for the event loop to come around again. So it's possible for the browser during this tasks to say, Hey, you know what? I have some of this to do, or there's another micro task that was added. So inside of a task, if I added a micro task at that point, it's going to get run before the other ones, before the other task. So that is it. That is the event loop. That's the order. So if you've ever had code that didn't seem to be running in the order that you expect it, it's this sequence. Think about this sequence. Think about what kind of task? What kind of thing? Is it something that's on the main stack? Is it something that's a micro task? Is it a task? And that is going to determine how your code is run, what order your code is run in. So that's just a basic introduction to the event loop with the sequencing of tasks, micro tasks, UI renders, and the main stack. So hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I answer what I have time for. And as always, Thanks for watching.